going to do a little video here um, with uh, the three of us, and we're all companions of Christ. I'm Father Peter Richards, uh, the pastor at Our Lady of the Lake, and all three of us live together. This is Father Kyle Kowalczyk. He's oh, I'm I'm at Saint Maximilian Colby and, in Delano. In Delano, okay, and. Father Peter Hughes, and I'm pastor at Immaculate Conception in Watertown and St. Boniface in St. Bonifacius. And did, so, you say, did you say Immaculate Conception first because you like them best? No. I like <laughs> them equally. It's just like children. We don't have favorites. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so we all live here in uh, Our Lady of the Lake, and we wanted to do a little video on, uh, on Holy Week. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So uh, Father Peter wanted to do a video on Holy Week, and he forced the other two of us to... Um, do the video with him. Yeah, okay. he's I like, think but, eviction was on the line. <laughs> but he's like in no, charge of the household. I'm thinking of you that you can also address your parishioners and uh, wouldn't that be nice and for us to do that all together? That would, so yes, I'm really yes. Serving <laughs> yes, that would be nice. Okay. All right. So Father Kyle, just let me be in control. Here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Holy Week and uh, maybe just a uh, maybe a different a different angle. Uh, what I'd like to start with is so Holy Week being from Palm Sunday uh, and particularly the celebration of the Holy Triduum, which is Holy Thursday, uh, evening Mass of the Lord's Supper the uh, Good Friday services, and the Easter Vigil uh, on Saturday evening. And <clears throat> so what I'd like to start with is asking the, the two of you, and I'll, I'll be involved in this too, is so did you, pre-priesthood, or even pre-seminary, was this going to... Palm Sunday, Holy Thursday, Good Friday services, and Easter Vigil, was that part of your um, family tradition? Did you go, did you do that on an annual basis? Yes. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was easy. <laughs> that didn't quite work out. Like, so actually, to... so like, the, the first, I remember the first time we went, I went to Easter Sunday Mass. Yeah. Because we would always go to the Triduum growing up, Thursday, Friday, Easter Vigil. Yeah. Um, and the first time I went to the Easter Easter Sunday Mass was in college. I had gone to the Easter Vigil also, but I was like, hey, I wonder if... And I was kind of helping out with the Newman Center and stuff. I was a junior in college, and that was the first time I went to Easter Sunday. So yeah, we were... Triduum was like really okay. big for us. Yeah. All right. Well, so I don't actually remember... I remember going to Good Friday. I remember going to Palm Sunday, Good Friday, and Easter Sunday, mm. up until maybe about 10th grade, uh, ninth or 10th grade. And then we started to go, because my brother's a monk at St. John's, we started to go to St. John's for the whole trio. And so I don't remember actually doing Holy Thursday and the Easter Vigil. Until we went to St. John's, um, so I, I can't say that I grew up. And the only thing I remember about Good Friday is is for the veneration of the cross. And, but so, what about you, Father Peter? Just yes. That's, Just that's, yes. That's, <laughs> I mean, that answers the question. <laughs> no. So yeah, growing up, we did the the Triduum uh, at St. Paul's in Ham Lake, uh, as far back as I can kind of remember. Going to Holy Thursday, Good Friday. Then we would go, I think oftentimes, to Easter Vigil. I guess I don't remember when I was real little, but I know I lectured a number of times for one of the many readings that we would do, kind of in the dark. It was always kind of fun. Yeah. And then we'd do Easter Sunday Mass, and then we'd come back and kind of have our Easter brunch and find our Easter baskets and eggs and everything else. But mm -hmm. Yeah, so growing up, as far back as I can remember, we did the Easter Vigil, or the uh, Easter Triduum. Yeah, and so... What are what are your memories of that, and um, what was your experience? Is it something that you 
look forward to, that you uh, thoroughly enjoyed all the way through? <laughs> uh, was it? Um, yeah. Well, it is, it's kind of an, it's kind of a, almost a, a loaded question, right? Like, did you like do you like the triduum? And it's like, at one hand, it's like yeah, it's like the culmination of, I mean, it's like the sort, it's like the biggest moment, but, but at the same Are time, you judging my question? no, 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 but I'm saying it's like, <laughs> yes, yes. but like I can think of as many times as I, I loved it. And even growing up, I, I remember always looking forward to it because it's so just amazing and spectacular. But at the same time, it's long, like there's long, and I remember this is this when I was on net, we were in, we were actually in Las Vegas diocese um, during Easter when I was on net and we went to the cathedral. Tell us what that is. Uh, Net Ministries, National Evangelization Teams, based out of West St. Paul, so we're traveling all over the country doing doing retreats for Catholic young people, and okay. um, we were at the cathedral, which is on the Strip in Vegas, and uh, Good Friday service. This place is packed. It's not as big as our cathedral, but I mean, it's like at least a thousand people, maybe two thousand people, and uh, for the veneration of the cross, one cross, which is appropriate but one cross for a two thousand people and i just remember like we were up pretty close and we're done and, yeah. you know so it's like yeah it's beautiful it's long it's yeah. it's a it's tough but it's good yeah it's good yeah. I, <clears throat> I i guess i in my memory of saint john's when we did the whole easter triduum is uh I think since I knew, since I knew my brother and I knew, you know, some of his friends who were monks, it was, it was more bearable, I think. <laughs> and it, there was beautiful, there was beauty to it, of course, too. But I, I would say uh, the things that I remember are the boring parts. <laughs> <laughs> I said those were most memorable, though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is a lot of your personality, I think. Maybe. Uh, I just remember how boring it was. And then I also remember... Wait, are we trying to get people to go? <laughs> well, <laughs> yes, everyone come. It's so boring. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. <clears throat> Let, we can talk about boring later. Bored is not a bad thing. That's right? true. That's true. Not bad to be bored. Okay. It forces you to be creative. Correct. But what I was going to say before I got interrupted <laughs> was that, um, so I was kind of focused on the after, all right? And um, I think it's, it's one of those things that maybe I wasn't so excited about going before, but I was really, afterwards, I was really glad that I did, you know? And, and, you know, even with the boring parts um, and the fact that after the Easter Vigil, I was hoping for um, chocolate bunnies and jelly beans and peeps and we actually got hot cross buns. <laughs> so that was a little bit of a letdown, but, but I was glad that I went to it. Uh, and... What about you, Father Peter? <laughs> uh, yeah, growing up, I always uh, enjoyed the Triduum because it was just it was something different. So oftentimes, I mean, I, I didn't hate Mass growing up, but it's just kind of the normal routine. But it seemed like those, you know, three days, it was something just vastly different where we're washing feet or we're venerating the cross. And we have these long intercessions and the Easter Vigil, you start in the darkness and then all the lights mm -hmm. turn on. And it's just really exciting. And... Just a very different experience, and so uh, for me, it was. I, I enjoyed it. Uh, yeah. Going. Yeah. That's the, that's the other thing I remember about the Easter vigil was the candle and like making nunchucks out of the candle during the. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you were one of the reasons why there's wax all, all over. over. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure the church ladies loved it. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. But the service of light. That was, I think, my favorite part. And the yeah. Litany of the Saints, I, I think. Um, and, and one of the things that's 
<clears throat> so this is all pre-priesthood, right, for us? Well, I, I still make the nunchucks, but... <laughs> <laughs> you, you can't do that in front of everybody. Well, it's still the lights are off there. Oh, so. yeah, okay. well, we'll teach you. There's always somebody watching. <laughs> anyway, um, so this is, you know, this is pre-priesthood, and, of course, we become priests, and so this is kind of... We grew up with this. This is in our bones, right? And so we really don't think about whether or not we're going to go to. Right. Like, am I gonna, wait, go? do I have an option? <laughs> <laughs> am I going to go this year? <laughs> am I going to go to the uh, to the Palm Sunday? Am I going to go to the Easter Trail? So we don't. Can you fill in for me on Easter? <laughs> <laughs> Holy Thursday. That'd be great. Um, uh, but. There's people that didn't grow up with this, you know, or maybe they grew up with it and it was such a pain for them, they didn't understand, um, that they stopped doing it. And so, what would you say to those people to sort of pique their interest and maybe consider making that a part of their family tradition and a part of, or the part of their individual tradition. Mm. Uh, that, uh, yeah, to consider that. <clears throat> I, remember it, I remember it occurred to me a couple of years ago, you know, you have Palm Sunday, and if you just go to Mass on Sundays, which is what we're supposed to do, and that's, you know, we're not required to go Thursday, Friday, right. but it's like, you know, if we go, if we go Palm Sunday where we're, the readings are, Jesus comes into Jerusalem, and we know what's going to happen. And then we skip to Sunday, and he's risen from the dead. It's like, well, we missed, we actually missed the drama of salvation. You know, it's like, we, we missed the crucifixion. Like, the resurrection has no, no real meaning if there's no crucifixion. Mm -hmm. And so we're kind of skipping the middle of the movie, so to speak. So I think we just get the... The completion of it, the, the wholeness of it. We go to every Sunday we're celebrating a mini resurrection. And yeah. so if we're not celebrating the especially Good Friday, I mean I think yeah. that we're, we're missing the we're missing it. Well I was thinking about Holy Thursday, you know, we too is that well, well first of all I was thinking <clears throat> Good Friday is more of a, an experiential it's more experiential aspect of the crucifixion than we would normally get, say, on, on a Sunday Mass. Um, but the, the thing about Holy Thursday, I, I was thinking, is that it's, it's when Jesus started the Mass. And, um, right. and there's something about celebrating that moment and, and of course our theology is that it's not just it's not just a, 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 a commemoration of a, an historical event but it actually becomes present again so and it becomes present in time now what happened um, but but uh, I think there's a, just something about celebrating and remembering the first time you know, and when Jesus started the Mass. Yeah. Well, even, that's what I was thinking about recently too, it's like, he, he started the Mass on Holy Thursday. He doesn't actually complete the Mass until Good Friday. Yeah. You know, the, the Last Supper and Calvary are all part of the same mystery, which is the Mass, which is what we celebrate every single Sunday. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, it's like once we we do this every single Sunday, but then once a year we kind of break it into its pieces so that we can um, see it all played out. Yeah. 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 I think one of the other things is that it just it helps us to be able to just live out our, our faith well. That's uh, one of the things we're kind of focusing on just a little bit in the background right now at my two parishes is 
just kind of bringing back some of the like the feasts of the church. So mm-hmm. here's a tradition of uh, the feast of St. John the Baptist in June to have a bonfire and just mm-hmm. like these different ways of being able to celebrate our, our Catholic faith with our lives rather than it just being, well, I go to Mass on, on Sunday and that's good enough. It's like, well, but what about your daily life of prayer? What about like really celebrating and living a liturgical life? Mm-hmm. Uh, and so that's one of the things that the Triduum is, is it invites us to experience something that's a little different than just Sunday Mass. It's experiencing the the mysteries in a more like in-depth and prolonged way, kind of like what Father Kowalczyk was saying. Uh, but it, it brings us to, to really ponder the mysteries of the institution of the Eucharist and the uh, institution of charity and to think about uh, the, the passion and how are all these things connected. Um, so that's one thing. But as we do that, as we're living out our faith, the other thing that it seems like is, is it allows our faith just to be a more deep and integral part of our life. So I think it's, is it Fulton Sheen that says without, there's no Easter Sunday without Good Friday or something along those lines. But by us going to the Good Friday liturgy and really pondering more deeply the crucifixion and reverencing or venerating the, the crucifix, it kind of brings home that point that yes, we all suffer in some way, but that's not the end of the story. We know that there's a resurrection, but it's a chance for us just to give honor to those places of suffering in our life to know that we don't have to suffer those alone, that Jesus suffered for us as well. And that in the midst of our trial and suffering, Jesus can be there in the depths of our heart, suffering with us. And it becomes this beautiful moment of prayer that we can then carry with us throughout the rest of the year as we experience various trials and difficulties that we can think back to that moment where we were able to kiss or genuflect or bow or whatever to, towards the crucifix that in that moment of our suffering, Jesus is there, there with us as well, but that it doesn't end there, that we're promised at some point there's going to be, you know, that, that moment of the resurrection. Uh, So that's, that's one of the things is, yeah, like kind of the Father Kowalczyk's point is that we can totally miss some of those dynamics that can really help us to live out our faith well in our Mm day-to-day living if we're just going from Sunday to Sunday. Yeah. I, 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 as I hear you talking, I, I think of as a priest, one of the most moving things for me, particularly, you know, being in a place that hasn't, I'm start. I'm getting to know people more here at Our Lady of the Lake, but when I, I see people venerating the cross mm-hmm. and, I, and I know how they've suffered, you know, at mm-hmm. least, at least for, to some degree. And and I, I know I know that that has meaning for them, mm-hmm. um, and there, that there's going to be there's a connection there with the Lord, yeah. um, and with their life because they've suffered. Yeah, um, yeah, it's, it almost brings me to tears sometimes. You know, even just talking about it. So yeah, that's. I think that's that's probably one of the moments I'm looking forward to most about this year because. I mean, last year we didn't really, it was, we're still in COVID. It's like we didn't really come up and, uh, I think at our parish we just did the, the, took the option where you just took some time kneeling in front of the cross, but we didn't come up and kiss the cross or anything. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I've, I'm, I've had so many beautiful moments. Uh, even remember at the cathedral uh, as a seminarian one time getting to hold the crucifix and mm-hmm. just seeing people like old ladies come down and kneel down on the ground and kiss the feet of Jesus or and they can little, barely get up, right, yeah. get up the aisle. Or yeah. little little kids who come up and like kiss Jesus right on the lips, you know, and it's like, yeah. man, this is yeah. wow. And and there's something about Good Friday that's so beautiful. I mean like ordinarily we only genuflect to the blessed sacrament. Yeah. But then on Good Friday the rubrics say you genuflect to the cross, mm-hmm. the crucifix. And so, like, in this, in this kind of sacramental, mystical way, it's like, this is really Jesus' cross. And because Jesus is God and outside of time, we're really with him at the foot of the cross. So it's, it's a really beautiful way that, like, who is there? John, Mama Mary, Mary Magdalene. Well, now we get to, we get to actually be there and, and comfort him in his, his sorrow, you know? Yeah, it's very, um, and I think as as life goes on, it seems to it becomes more and more deeply meaningful um, and connection with the Lord. I think every time, 
uh, every time you celebrate it. Um, and it's, we only do it once a year too, you know, and it's, uh, um, so it's, it's powerful and we carry that throughout the year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I, I think you guys did a pretty good job in making it appealing to well, people. It's good. Oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> and, and just remember, if you get bored during the Triduum, that probably means you're going to be a priest, because <laughs> Father Peter was bored when he was growing up at the Triduum, too. Uh, um, and if, if anybody from St. Max wants to come to our... <laughs> <laughs> Um, so uh, we we want you to know I think well you can each say it if you want but I think we all three of us we love our parishes we love the people in our parishes and and um, and hope that uh, especially if this wasn't something that you thought about doing is coming to the Easter Triduum that this year you will um, because the Lord is going to touch you, and um, and uh, we'll also be happy that you're there. So, anything else you want to say? What time does your Easter vigil start at? It starts at eight thirty. Ours is at eight nineteen. <laughs> is it really? So, <laughs> it's a half hour after twilight. I calculated uh, it. Okay, well, sundown is at eight oh one, and you're supposed to wait a half an hour. Uh, I thought it was at 7.51. Or 7 no, I think Kyle. 49. So I think Kyle might be right on that. St. Max is going to be a liturgically. <laughs> so. <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure it was like, yeah, because I remember it was like 19 or so I rounded up to 8.30 for ours. Oh, okay. Um, well, if you want to get in early, get it over with. <laughs> <laughs> but you're doing an extra few readings, so we'll end first. <laughs>